Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings be upon you all. And Juma Mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmedahu, Nasdainahu, Nasdaufiruhu. On Aoud Billahi, Min Shuruli, and Fusna, Min Sayati, Amalina. May Yadi Hilahu, Fala Mudilla, now may you deal who Fala Hadila. Why should we lay the high law of Mahbehula, Shirikala? Why should Anna Mohammedan Arbidu or Sulu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. Bear witness that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. And bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in the state of full submission to Allah. Allah also says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yawfir lakum thunubakum wa man yuta'illaha wa rasulahum faqad faaz wa qawz al azimah that Allah tells us, O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and say that which is right. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim hakeem. I pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task and loosen knots in my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah. Glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with the, you all, uh, whether here in spirit or in the future at some time uh, for this blessed day of Juma. And uh, with respect to our topic of discussion, our book for today, I wanted to pull from <clears throat> a book of hadith that we had been talking about in uh, previous uh, khutbah with respect to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and how the some of these hadith relate and translate to us, even if they may have been for a particular situation uh, or time or scenario. And this particular book has been just from uh, the Riyadh al-Salihin um, by Imam al nawi and the compilation of hadith uh, that he has. And underneath the category of uh, the book of etiquette of traveling. So uh, it's related per se to various aspects of travel, uh, you know, and how to treat you know, your camel, how to treat uh, your your means of, of transportation, how to take care of yourself and uh, how to observe your prayers, all these different things that relate to traveling. And the section, the chapter that uh, that we'll lift up today is under the section of helping a companion. And what this, uh, the few hadith that are listed here have a lot to offer us with respect to a ethical worldview, an Islamic ethical worldview of how we just operate in our day-to-day -day lives. Again, this is maybe uh, with respect to the aspect of travel, but it gives us an insight to what the Islamic faith and what the prophetic example uh, modeled for us and models for us in any aspect of our life uh, and, and what virtues are lifted up, what, what are the ethics that are uh, upheld for us. And uh, thinking about what are we kind of ingrained to think about? How are we kind of molded by our society, by our environment? And what this example of the Prophet ﷺ and of the companions in this time has to show us here. So the first hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, is related by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri who said that while we were traveling with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, a rider came and began to stare on the right and on the left. The Prophet ﷺ, the Messenger of Allah said that he who has an extra mount should hand it over to one who has none, and he who possesses surplus provision should give it without him, to him who is without provision. He named various kinds of possessions until we began to think and realize that none of us had any right to anything surplus. So thinking about in this aspect that we, we are in, 
a we are in a society we're in a space where uh just the mentality is very much uh mine 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 and like how can i get mine how can uh i you know assess a situation or do a kind of risk analysis or risk assessment uh, based on what i will lose and 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 you know so much of our uh, uh of our day-to-day -day life our economics is kind of based on this principle of you know this kind of risk assessment of like what what are you going to lose if you choose to invest so much so or what, are, what what's in it for you um and and the process of being able to kind of reframe this in this aspect that you know we we had uh, a stranger come in this situation, a, a rider that comes, uh, you know, in, into the scene and, and is looking on the left, on the right. And the Prophet is advising this person with respect to, uh, you know, where our ethics are centered, it, are, where are advising the, the people that are here, where, you know, are, uh, are, are, are kind of like, uh, where should we be directing um, you know, our focus, you know, should it be a inward center? Should it be self-centered? Should it be actually community centered and, and, and be actually human centered in this way that, uh, whereas many institutions, many, uh, economic frameworks, many of the, the spaces in which we operate in, in our society will kind of, again, make, our lens be something that's very inward facing or very selfish facing or you know in in another aspect very greedy focus with respect to the institution or for other things but not be human centered not be centered to the needs of actual people uh, they'll be you know focused on other things and this aspect of uh the prophet's uh you know not just his advice but uh, of the islamic principle to be able to adopt a very positive very simple human oriented formula of cooperation and of uh, success and of being able to just operate together that if we have enough means if we uh, have this aspect of hoarding um or if we have you know sufficient amount of resources that our focus should not be on how do i get more 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 you know this is something very common uh within the spaces that we operate and the messaging that we kind of get like unless you have your worth your who you are, what your status is, is not uh, going to be anything unless you have more and more and more and more and more. And so this concept of kind of hoarding or this uh, holding of wealth and, 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 and resources or whatnot, uh, kind of keeping it to yourself or just kind of keeping it in this aspect, but not giving it to those who are needing it, not sharing it with other people. This is something quite commonplace with respect to how uh, our systems and societies are operating. But what the Prophet is giving uh, an example in this in this aspect uh, is not just to people who know each other very well, but also among strangers to adopt this kind of ethic that, you know, if someone has uh, something that's extra, they should hand it over to somebody who does not. So thinking about what are we, are we living within our means? What is sufficient for us? Do we, uh, if we're in a household of, you know, two people, why do we have three cars? Or why do we have, you know, if, if we, if it's even necessary, why do we have two cars that are there? What, what are the different things? Or if we are a household of two people, why do we have, you know, five bedrooms or whatever it might be? Thinking about, are we living within our means while the people who we know uh, that might be folks who are familiar to us or people like this rider who are strangers to us uh, may not have the means that we do, may not have what we need. So thinking about in this aspect that, you know, in order to be able to properly operate through this world in an Islamic way, Islamic ethic framework, um, to be able to think about how uh, we develop a true sense and awareness of not just ourself and, and, and a recognizing of what our means are, what our capacity is, and what our really our needs are, rather than what our wants and our desires are, but are also being able to recognize what are the needs of other people, how can we be able to help those? If I have, you know, uh, if I, you know, have enough clothes for, you know, the whole month, is it is it something sufficient for me to say that I can maybe get by with like by giving away a few of these clothes or a few of these shirts or a few whatever it may be because I can at least still do laundry and be able to have enough for going forward. But what about the person that has nothing? So thinking about that, are the first example given in this uh, collection of hadith tells us about the uh, the the frame of mind in which we operate and and the prophet teaching this in the concept of travel in the concept of journeying 
we have to think about what do you do with your excess when, as, as we've heard from uh, the famous Hadith that, you know, be in this world as a traveler, uh, thinking of you're not taking too much with you, you're operating as a traveler, you're not taking your whole house with you or all single belongings, you're taking just enough of what you need. Um, and you're, you know, kind of operating with that, that not a minimalist sense, but you're, you're taking what your bare necessities are. Um, and thinking about in this aspect, the Prophet has advised us that in those moments where we recognize that we have something extra to give, to be also mindful of the needs of other people, uh, not just be like, oh, I have all these different things. Let me just go dump it to uh, a donation and say that that's that's all I could do. No, if you reckon, if you're aware of the needs of your neighbor, your neighbor who is unhoused, your neighbor who is to your right, to your left or wherever they might be, recognizing they might benefit from this and being able to actually go and help them with this. So the first thing that comes up is for us to be cognizant of our means, cognizant of the possessions we have, cognizant of all the different things that we've got here and recognizing are these things truly everything that we need um, or if, if we if we have an excess of something, if we have extra of something, what are we doing with it? And not just are we just giving it away in the sense, but are we mindful of the needs of other people so that we can give this to them where it needs to go and where it can give most benefit. So being aware of our needs and, and our, our limits as well as what's our ceiling, but also being aware of the needs of our neighbor. The next hadith that Prophet is related, um, has been related through here, is uh, that Jabir uh, re reported that when the Prophet ﷺ had made up his mind to go on an expedition, he would say to us, O Muhajirun and Ansar, there are among you such people who have no property and no kinsfolk. Let every one of you take along with him two or three men. None of us had a spare animal, animal we took rides by turn. So I took two or three men with me, and I rode my camel by uh, by turn equally with them. Um, so this pro this aspect of uh, the Prophet some continuing to incorporate within the uh, the psyche of the uh, companions of the Sahaba, but also of the Muslims to come, not just in the concept of travel, but in the concept of how they operate in day to day life, to be able to recognize that there are folks among you who do not have uh, maybe the same things that you might, the same things that you might be enjoying, the wealth that you might have, the property you might have, or even the families. Some people may not have children. Some people may not have uh, extended family or this kind of support network. So it's important for us to be cognizant rather than to be able to see folks as the haves and the have-nots, as kind of our society oftentimes ingrains, that if you've got it, you've got it. If you don't, you don't. Um, but to be able to recognize that there are people uh, among us, there are people who are a part of our ummah, there's people a part of our shared human experience who have, uh, you know, the, uh, who don't have those things that we might take for granted, we might enjoy, but let's every one of you, each and every one of you take along with them two or three individuals. So being able to say, how do we share? How do we be able to be more cooperative with that which we do have? Uh, not necessarily just saying that, okay, hey, you're just going to be uh, the people who don't have come over here to the people that do have, but be able to create this space in our society that we recognize that even folks who may not have a material thing, may, may not have property, may not even have, you know, extended family or children or whatnot, everyone has something to offer. And in that societal space that lifts up the sharing, lifts up the cooperation, lifts up the gifts of people uh, and gives the opportunity for everyone to come to that table and be able to offer benefit, we'll be able to show that it's not just the haves who have something to offer and the have-nots who have nothing to offer but only to receive, but be able to level that playing field in the sense that uh, thinking about how they would take turns in, in riding their camel you know it wasn't just that okay only the have-nots uh can be on the camel because they don't have a camel so they're just going to ride all the way through and the person who has the camel has to just be uh walking alongside because they own the camel and so they can ride at any time but only the people who have not will be on the camel no rather it was a shared experience but it was something that was like what do we have uh that maybe not everyone has how can we be able to distribute it how can we be able to use it equitably but at the same time what do we have to offer thinking about those people that are riding time at time that maybe the person who's riding the camel at one point does not have wealth does not have family does not have all these other things does not have their own camel but is able to maybe see something or has some insight or has some wisdom that maybe they weren't able to offer because they were on they were lower on the ground they could not see from where they were but the process of being able to equitably distribute the opportunity, the access that 
our systems and our societies, quite frankly, don't see that that they create different binaries, they create different systems of inequality and uh, different stratas that exist. And this was a system that was coming about. This was a framework and an ethic of coming about that allowed for uh, people to be able to see each other's humanity, not just by what their status was, what their wealth was, but be able to be able to see um, how they could properly share, how they could distribute um, and how they could come together as a society, as a people, to work together in a way that recognized each person's gifts. So in the first hadith, we talked about recognizing our means, recognizing what we have, and the need to be able to, uh, the, the awareness to be able to see other folks' needs, but also to be able to see where can we, where do we have access, and where do we not want to hoard, where can we give to other folks when we have enough for what's our, what's sufficient for us. And the next hadith talking about how we can be able to share that which we have, not just for the sake of being charitable, not just for the sake of from the haves giving to the have-nots, but being able to create a space where people equally are involved in whatever endeavor it might be, that everybody has something to offer if they are just given that opportunity. And if folks who have the property, have the uh, privilege, are willing to share it, willing to relinquish a little bit of it in a sense, and willing to distribute it, that uh, opening those doors for access, opening those doors for uh, involvement from other folks, and bringing a seat at the table for people who may not share the same as uh, shame, same kind of privileges, uh, opens up for a better way of operating, not just in a situation, but in a society. And think about how this is coming to fruition, how this has been a discourse within our own society, where we constantly have uh, different debates about affirmative action or different things that try to be able to level a playing field. But you see the uh, pushback that we oftentimes will see from folks that have a lot of privilege historically have had a lot of things um, handed to them or given to them or taken in different ways and the hesitance to be able to share that or the demonization of other people who don't have uh, as being seen as kind of like leeches or being seen as uh, not having pulled themselves up from their bootstraps and our prophet also some recognizing that in humanity some people will be given property and family and be able to be born with it you don't really choose that some people won't but our responsibility as a society as a ummah as a collective is to be able to succeed together it's not just an individual success it's to be able to uh, create a space that all people are able to achieve and the last hadith that the Prophet is, uh, is related to report here, uh, as also by Jabba, it was reported that the Prophet used to lag behind while traveling and urge the weak to keep walking, to walk quickly. He used to take up someone behind him and make supplication for him. And so thinking about in this aspect, the Prophet is, you know, on, on a journey, but at the same time, he's demonstrating leadership is not just the person who's all the way at the front, unmindful of the needs for the people at the back, but he's also not just operating from a lens where it's just like, hey, you know, right where you are, you stay exactly where you are, you operate exactly as you are, we're, we're going on this caravan, we, we see a lot of times where we have um, you know, these frameworks in which we are saying that, you know, you can just stay exactly as you are, just 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 kind of go at your own pace and go there. But our prophet is recognizing that in the particular situation, especially in the context of travel, how you are going about your journey, how you are operating will inevitably affect the larger caravan, will affect the folks ahead. And so the prophet is not only modeling this aspect of leadership, that it's not just from the way front, it's not just distant disconnected from the people and nor is it all the way at the back um you know just again disconnected from the people you go and do what you need to do and i'll stay back here and if something happens uh, i'm the first person to turn around know that he stays towards the back but he's mindful of those who may not be able to keep up he's mindful of those who are not able to maybe uh keep that same speed and similar to someone who's like a personal trainer or like a coach, uh, he'll he, and, and thinking about how our Prophet Sallallahu has operated historically in other situations, he probably wouldn't shame people. He probably wouldn't, you know, make fun of them in that sense. That wasn't his, his behavior or his character um, to demean people and to humiliate them or to anything like that, but to be cognizant of their needs, to be cognizant of their abilities uh, and also their, their different disabilities and things that they had different abilities in. 
and be able to recognize that he would still encourage the people in this case in travel to if they were uh you know having us trouble kind of keeping up or if they were at the back to kind of continue to encourage them like you know keep going keep going we got to pick up let's pick up the pace a little bit think about if you're in a fitness class or if you are having a personal trainer you yourself are like man i, I don't think i can run this mile at this time or i don't think i can keep up this pace and the person next to you is like no hey keep it up keep going keep going and being able to encourage you and be able to help you get to the goal, which you probably thought was impossible, which you thought you couldn't do, but is working in a way with those who are considered in the least, those who are considered uh, at the back, those who are considered the weak, um, the oppressed, the people who are dispossessed, to be able to walk with them and encourage them to kind of help them stay with the rest of the group. But also thinking about in this context that the Prophet would not only do this in this case of, of, a, of a of a kind of physical encouragement of just a verbal encouragement and and that's the that's the example that he left but he used to take someone behind him and make supplication for him he used to take somebody with him have somebody uh you know at the back but also thinking about how the process is operating the process is not just operating if he's thinking about this from a material sense from a worldly sense man these people are causing us to lag behind they're causing this caravan or this uh you know this this you know, journey that we're going on there, they are causing delays. And he is going to be then looking at what are we losing out on materially? What are we losing out? The time, the sun is going down really quick, or man, we should have been at this town by this time, uh, because we, we, we would have missed out on something else if, if that wasn't the case. But thinking about that, the process is, uh, cognizant of people who are maybe falling behind, going to them, being there to help encourage them, at the same time, making dua for them, making supplication for them, keeping them in prayer. That if he had a an, a worldly objective, he could very easily just, you know, uh, lead from the front and tell these people to kind of hurry up and assign people at the back to kind of hurry folks up. But to be able to go amongst the people who are struggling, to help encourage them to be their best selves, to push them to a space where they may not have thought possible, while at the same time, keeping them in the highest form of remembrance and supplication to ask Allah for their help, to ask Allah uh, to benefit them and to improve them and, and, and whatever the case may be. But it was much more intentional. It wasn't just material driven or, or focus driven. So thinking about what lesson does it have for us? that we're coming from this aspect of recognizing our needs, recognizing what we have and not hoarding, but being able to operate from a lens of sharing with other people, giving to other people as we need, building more community-centered approach uh, and sharing uh, a shared uh, aspect of operating, recognizing each other's gifts, recognizing all of us on this journey have something to offer, um, but we need to recognize who amongst us has those different means that we can then share and be able to continue to operate, but also being able to see that uh, how we go on this journey, uh, there's going to be folks who are going to be towards the front, there's going to be folks in the middle, there's going to be folks at the back, and how we should view it is not one person's just a drain on the whole group, or the front is just uh, completely disconnected from the back or, or whatnot, but this whole group has a variety of people of different abilities and different ways in which they uh, can approach and they can benefit the caravan, they can benefit the journey, but uh, some folks require us to be more mindful of not to not to forget that uh, there's folks of different abilities, but those who have the privileges, those who have the abilities to be able to recognize what are they going to do with that and, and being able to go and help those uh, who may need a little bit of help. And not just for the sake of seeing this as a way of, uh, you know, improving our uh, bottom line or be able to protect our, our finances or something for a worldly reason, but for the sake of uh, the love for that person, for the sake of Allah, for the sake uh, of a higher purpose than just for some material reason. So being able to not just go and help the person and be able to help those who need the help and be able to accompany those who need help, uh, but also being able to genuinely pray, genuinely supplicate, being able to keep a higher uh, intention in mind than just okay hey y'all are y'all are costing us money y'all are costing us this so in some the hadith that we kind of shared here of the prophet sallam in helping a companion on a travel gives us a framework for how we can operate in our life uh in 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 our world just in any particular situation uh, whether it is community organizing whether it is some type of financial endeavor or project or some other type of 
uh, thing, uh, initiative that we take, uh, just an aspect of how we operate in the world that we recognize our means, we recognize our uh, our possessions, we recognize what we have, but we also recognize the needs of other people, that we recognize that the best way in which we can operate in this world is not one that's just individual driven, but it's recognizing other people have different gifts as well. Uh, other people have things that maybe we were not given or we have things that they were not given. How we create a shared way of operating for a, a better space that we can create, a better world that we can create. But thinking about how is this impacting us in the Akhirah as well, that what we do in this life does not go to waste. So how we're operating here, we're creating a more charitable space. We're creating a more a space where our Prophet has told us to spread that salam, to the best thing that you can do is spread the salam, to tell each other that you love one another, to cultivate a shared space, but also to be mindful of our different needs and abilities and to be able to continue to uh, foster this harmony between people who are uh, who may be see, seen at the front of the line and people who are seen at the back to not see any difference in each other um, when it comes to those abilities, but to recognize what abilities that you have, what privileges that you have, and be able to share those uh, to help each other for mutual benefit and not without any disconnection to recognizing that we are all uh, one under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are uh, we are connected by this aspect of prayer. We are connected by our faith identity and to not lose the focus of not just helping this person for a worldly purpose or helping each other doing something for a worldly purpose, but to keep them in prayer as Prophet would do. So our Prophet has left behind for us a very rich example in each and every aspect of his life, whether it's in the concept of traveling or in his making his day and, and just going about his routine that has an impact for each of us in any aspect of our life. Um, and as we just continue to go through the Prophet's life, recognizing that uh, the example he left for us 1400 years ago is one that we continue to be able to benefit by should we uh, open our mind to it. And not just us individually, but our society can benefit as well as we move to a different space within our society that uh, pushes against kind of what we're reading about, what we hear, and thinking about what does the uh, Islamic framework, what does our Prophet's example have to offer us in such a time as this? Alhamdulillah, <laughs>